welcome students this is the 8th lecture of a welding series and this lecture is based on the tungsten inert gas welding process. Uh, during the second world war when uh, it was required to join the aluminum plates and the magnesium plates uh, there was a lot of difficulty experienced in joining the reactive metals of aluminum and magnesium alloys and uh, that is why uh, the technologists were forced to uh, develop new process and uh, because at that time uh, gas welding and the cellular metal arc welding processes were available, uh, but uh, both uh, these processes were uh, unable to join the aluminum alloys and magnesium alloys successfully and this has led to uh, the development of uh, the tungsten inert gas welding process. This process was developed in USA somewhere in 1940 and uh, for uh, the welding of uh, aluminum and magnesium alloys particularly because then available processes gas and the cellular metal arc welding processes were unable to join these reactive metals successfully and uh, that is why uh, this TIG process uh, TIG welding process was developed at that time. The difficulty in uh, welding of the aluminum alloys and magnesium alloys by the cellular metal arc welding and the gas welding process was experienced due to the two main regions. One was that uh, the hygroscopic nature of the coatings. The cellular metal arc welding process you know that uh, it uses the coated electrodes and uh, the coating materials are hygroscopic in nature which absorbs. Uh, the moisture from the atmosphere and when moisture goes into the coating during the uh, welding this moisture is released in form of water vapor, water vapors and uh, water vapors decompose into the hydrogen and oxygen in arc environment and this hydrogen is absorbed by the aluminum and magnesium metals uh, molten metal in, in the weld pool and which uh, increases the tendency to form porosity. And uh, that is why whatever welds of uh, these uh, alloys were produced by cellular metal arc welding process were uh, having lot of porosity that is why it was a difficulty was experienced in joining the aluminum and the magnesium alloys by cellular metal arc welding process. And the same difficulty was also experienced in case of the gas welding also. Gas welding had two disadvantages, one was uh, related to the atmospheric contamination because there was nothing like uh, shielding of the molten weld pool of the aluminum or magnesium alloys that led to the con atmospheric contamination due to the oxidation of the molten metal at high temperature. And another reason was the low welding speed which is offered by the gas welding system particularly in welding of the aluminum because whatever heat is supplied that is transferred rapidly from the weld uh, from the base metal to uh, the comparatively uh, from the faint surfaces to the base metal and that is why melting of the faint surfaces uh, by gas welding of aluminum plates becomes difficult. And this, uh, these uh, factors force the technologists to develop the tungsten inert gas welding process. Tungsten uh, electrodes are used, inert gas is used as a shielding gas and that is why entire process is known as tungsten inert gas welding. And this uh, welding uh, uh, system, uh, the tungsten inert gas welding uh, system consists number of major components which uh, play significant role in successful welding uh, by this process. One is the power source, power source is required to deliver high current at low voltage of uh, the desired type, maybe constant voltage or constant current type. Normally constant current type of the power sources are used in tungsten inert gas welding process and uh, the desired type of current means either AC or DC current uh, is required for the welding of uh, the specific kind of metal like aluminum welding needs AC and uh, uh, for uh, other metals even DC with electrode negative polarity uh, the welding power sources are used. The welding torch which uh, accommodates the electrodes and uh, uh, nozzle and collets 
to hold the electrode are provided in the welding torch. Filler metal sometimes used in case of a somewhat thicker uh, seats welding. Otherwise, uh, if, if the thin seats are to be welded, then no filler metals are used and selection of the filler metals also plays a significant role in successful welding of uh, the metals like aluminum and magnesium stainless steel where, wherever high quality weld joints are to be produced. Cooling system is also uh, very important in gas uh, in tungsten inert gas welding process where uh, the cooling systems can be uh, of uh, air cool type or water cool type. Normally for the low current range welding torches um, like up to two, uh, 150 ampere air cooled air cooling is used and for uh, higher current uh, range uh, welding torches water cooling systems are, systems are used so that the torch uh, welding torch can be uh, maintained within the specified safe limits. Shielding gas helps to protect the weld pool and the uh, tungsten electrode from the atmospheric contamination. So, effective shielding plays a significant role in producing the successful high quality weldments. And uh, some device may also be required uh, to uh, move the torch at a uh, constant uh, speed or at a desired uh, speed. So, for automatic or semi-automatic welding processes, additional devices may also be used which will help to produce uh, the weldment uh, of the good quality. Uh, if uh, we have to understand uh, uh, the things related to the tungsten inert gas welding process, we have to see what it is and how does it work. It is a process in which uh, heat generated by uh, an arc which is struck between the non-consumable tungsten electrode and the work piece. So, heat generated by the arc between the tungsten electrode and work piece is utilized for melting of the faint surfaces of the base metal and the filler metal. And uh, at the same time inert gas is used to provide shielding of the arc zone and the weld pool, so that the electrode and uh, the weld pool can be protected from the atmospheric contamination. The TIG is a mainly used uh, process for welding of the metal uh, like uh, stainless steel, aluminum and magnesium. These metals tend to form the refractory oxides which uh, impose difficulty in, in producing the sound joint in conventional welding processes like shielded metal arc welding or gas, mel uh, gas welding. That is why the formation of uh, those oxides of these metals is avoided by providing the shielding of the inert gas. And the alloy steels and the cast steels can also be joined successfully by the tungsten inert gas welding process, but uh, these will be used only when very high quality joints are to be uh, produced for the safety and the reliability uh, reasons such as in case of the aerospace and then in nuclear industry. So, if the high quality welds are to be produced then cost will not be a consideration and even steels, uh, alloy steels and carbon steels can be welded by the tungsten inert gas welding process that will help to produce high quality weld, mind, weld joints which will offer high safety and the reliability. Some other points related to the tungsten inert gas welding process are like uh, that this process is mainly used for joining the um, very thin components and very critical components where very controlled heat input is required. Uh, like joining of the thin uh, walled pipes uh, is possible mainly by the tungsten inert gas welding process or very uh, thin components are to be welded then a very close control over the heat input is required and under those conditions TIG can be used successfully. And uh, because very is, uh, increase uh, very high intensity heat uh, source is provided by this process and which helps to have better control over the melting of the thin seeds 
and that is why this process is normally used for uh, uh, producing the high quality weld joints of the thin sheets and wherever precision is required. Uh, we can see that uh, the ischemic diagram of the tungsten hydrate gas welding process where this is the work piece and this is the tungsten electrode. Arc is struck between uh, the work piece and the electrode and the heat generated by the arc is used for melting of the fang surfaces of the work piece and as per needs filler metal can be added either manually or automatically in the arc region for filling the groove or the, the fang surface the gap between the fang surfaces and around the arc a jet of uh, uh, shielding gas is supplied so that uh, a blanket or cover of the shielding gas can be made available around the weld pool and around the arc so that they can be protected from the arc environment and here the shielding gas is supplied um, in form of uh, the helium or uh, uh, argon which is supplied from a cylinder and that passes through this nozzle and the welding torch and uh, here these are these also indicate the power supply line connections here one terminal of the power source is connected to the electrode through the contact tubes or uh, through the collets and here another uh, terminal of the power source is connected to the work piece so that the welding circuit can be completed uh, here we can see mainly power source welding torch a work piece and the, the shielding gas cylinder here, but there are many other components are also used in, in uh, tungsten inert gas welding process. So, those details of those uh, elements can be seen in the next slide. Here, the complete typical TIG welding setup can be seen here. This uh, is the welding torch, this is work piece here, the ground connection or connection of. Uh, the power source one terminal of the power source to the work piece this is the remote control to start and stop uh, and, the, um, and the power source and here the gas supply unit this is the power source and uh, here this you can say coolant uh, cooling system which is used to maintain the temperature of uh, uh, the welding torch within the safe limits. So, here all these elements are uh, important elements of the tungsten inert gas welding process along with the connections uh, can be seen here from this diagram. Power source uh, is most important component uh, uh, here we, we have seen that uh, whenever we talk about uh, the tungsten inert gas uh, components the power source will be talked about first because it delivers the power which is required for producing the, uh, uh, the sound weld joint uh, or producing the heat uh, required for melting in the fang surfaces of the base metal to be joined. The power source which is used for tungsten inert gas welding process is mainly of the constant current type here and, and this uh, uh, constant current type of the power source is mainly used due to the two regions. One is it is essentially pro it essentially provides the constant current which helps to produce the heat uniformly during the welding so that uniform penetration and melting can be obtained and uh, that uh, that is required for producing uh, the consistent and uniform weld so the, the ability to supply the constant current is important even when there is minor fluctuation in arc length and another reason is that during the welding uh, uh, the uh, source circuiting between the electrode and work piece can take place during the starting or during the operation itself. So, when source circuiting takes place the constant current power sources are able to supply um, uh, 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 the constant current power sources supply very limited source circuiting uh, current and uh, that uh, helps to protect uh, uh, the power source cables from any kind of damage because the constant voltage power sources under source circuit condition um, supplies theoretically infinite uh, value of the current that can damage to the power source and to the welding cable. So, 
ability to uh, supply uh, the short circuiting current in limited manner at the time when short circuiting has taken place improves the life of uh, the electrode. Otherwise, life is adversely affected uh, because during the actual welding, this uh, the, there is always some fluctuation in arc length if it is controlled manually and uh, under those conditions constant voltage power source will be able to supply the constant current magnitude even when there is minor fluctuation in arc voltage or minor fluctuation in arc length. That will not affect um, the, the soundness of the weldment even when there is fluctuation in arc length because the constant voltage a uh, constant current power sources are able to supply the constant current even when there is minor fluctuation in arc length. Uh, with uh, constant current power sources can be of AC or DC type uh, normally constant uh, uh, current power sources of the DC type is normally used for uh, uh, ferrous metals welding. Uh, the AC uh, type of the constant current power sources are used in welding of uh, the metals like uh, aluminum and magnesium. So, TIC can use both AC and DC type of the power sources of the constant current type, but it depends on the type of the electrode and the material to be used. Pure electrodes provides a good arc stability with the DCEN due to the good electron emitting capability, but the poor pure electrodes, uh, pure tungsten electrodes also known to offer the poor uh, life. Uh, when uh, other polarities are used like DC, EP or the AC uh, current is used. While DC, EP used when cleaning action is required in welding of aluminum, but it lowers the life of electrode. The, both these points are need to be understood. One is um, when DC, EP is used, two third of heat is generated in the electrode side and that uh, leads to the uh, excessive erosion of the tungsten electrode which in turn adversely affects its life. But when DC EP is used a work piece acts as a, uh, as a electrode or uh, as a work piece becomes the negative one. Uh, so, that electrons are, ex uh, are expected to be produced by the work piece and uh, when DC EP is used the mobile cathode dispots are formed in the base metal side and those mobile cathode dispots help to loosen the refractory oxide film which is formed on their surfaces that helps to clean provide the cleaning action loosening of the oxide film uh, leads to the better cleaning action of the oxide film from the surface. So, if the advantage of the cleaning action is to be taken DC EP is used, but it adversely affects the electrode life. Therefore, to have an optimum combination of the cleaning action and the electrode life AC uh, is used for welding of the aluminum or other reactive metals like magnesium. So, AC gives an optimum combination of the cleaning action and the electrode life. Uh, normally, uh, the, the welding current and the voltage are very important for successful welding because the kind of penetration and the deposition rate which will be obtained largely depends on the welding current and the voltage. If a current and the voltage is not set properly, we may lead to have either erratic arc or arcs are which are having poor stability. Even arc ignition may also become difficult. So, normally tungsten inert gas welding process uh, welding power source uh, become of a constant current type which supply the current in range of uh, the 3 to 200 amperes or uh, 5 to 300 amperes and, and the arc voltage in range of 10 to 30 uh, 5 volts at 60 percent duty cycle. And the two constant current power uh, can be obtained uh, from the thyristor controlled transformers. Uh, actually, there is always some change in, in the uh, current value whenever there is 
fluctuation in arc length, although that change is not significant, but exact constant value uh, of the current can be obtained when uh, there is a flux, um, uh, even when there are fluctuations in, in the arc length with the thyristor controlled uh, transformers. So, if the true constant current is to be obtained, it is better to use the thyristor controlled uh, transformers. And uh, filler metals uh, are used only when somewhat thicker sheets are to be used. Thick filler metals will be provided either manually or automatically. It depends upon how much volume of the material is to be deposited through the filler metal. As per needs, filler metal can be added directly into the weld pool from a separate wire feed system or it can be done manually. Normally, for uh, welding of the thin sheets, no filler metal is used like 1 mm, 2 mm, 3 mm thickness sheets can be welded directly without using any filler metal. And when no filler metal is used, we call that joint as a autogenous uh, joint or autogenous weld. Otherwise, when filler metal is used, it is termed as heterogeneous weld. Uh, usually, filler metal is not used in welding of the thin seats. And uh, for uh, automatic feeding of the filler metal in welding of the thick seats, uh, 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 automatic uh, feeders can be used, uh, which uh, uh, will help to feed the filler wire at a constant uh, speed. And normally, uh, since the diameter of the filler wire is a small, push type of uh, the filler wire feeding mechanisms is used, which uh, may be having better control over the speed to feed the filler wire as per needs. And this is particularly uh, used when thick sheets or plates are to be welded. So, electrode size or sorry filler uh, wire size uh, is normally small and it can vary in a range of uh, point 8 to 2.4 mm. So, if the aluminum uh, filler wires are to be used, they will show uh, tendency to get damaged if the pull type of the filler wire feed mechanism is used. Not normally, that is why for uh, feeding the small diameter aluminum fillers, the push type of filler wire feed mechanism is used. The size of filler wire for a given application is determined by the thickness of the section to be welded. This will help to uh, determine that how many passes will be used to uh, fill the gap. If the very thick plates are to be welded using the small diameter filler wire, we may need large number of the passes. So, depending upon the volume of the metal which is to be deposited for filling the uh, gap or for filling the joint, the size of the filler wire is determined in such a way that it will require a reduced number of uh, the passes for producing the joint. And the selection of the filler wire depends upon uh, uh, the kind of material which is to be deposited. If improper selection of the filler wire is made, it may lead to the very defective welds, the weld joint with number of cracks and very reduced mechanical or metallurgical properties. Particularly, improper selection can lead to the cracking and poor corrosion resistance. So, the selection of the material for a TIG filler wire is very critical for successful welding. And normally, aluminum silicon and aluminum magnesium based filler wires are used uh, for joining the aluminum uh, seats. Uh, if uh, the aluminum filler wires are not selected properly, it can lead to the cracking of uh, the weld, weld joint immediately after the welding. Like this diagram, these two diagrams shows the cracking sensitivity of the weldment as a function of the magnesium content as a function of uh, Mg2 Si content in the weldment. Here you can see related relative crack sensitivity increases with the increase in magnesium content up to say 2 percent uh, and then it, it starts to decrease. So, if uh, the cracking is to be avoided, it is desired that uh, in the weldment, the uh, magnesium percentage 
is more than 5 percent. So, that crack sensitivity of the weld joint can be reduced and the same is applicable here also that the, the, the joint composition is designed uh, in such a way or weld composition is designed in such a way that the MG 2 SI percentage uh, is above this 5 percent. So, that the crack sensitivity of the joint can be reduced and this is particularly important in case of aluminum magnesium silicon or aluminum silicon magnesium well joints. Here we will see some other uh, aspects related to the selection of uh, the tungsten filler wires. In many cases if the filler wire uh, is of uh, the same as that of base metal even then it causes the cracking problem. Cracking in the weld main mainly takes place due to the development of the residual stresses and if the strength of the metal at high temperature is poor it can lead to the cracking of the weld main even when it is uh, very hot. So, that uh, is known as hot cracking or hot shortness uh, or solidification uh, cracking. So, uh, the even uh, similar base uh, filler metal same as that of base metal can also lead to the cracking of the weldment. Therefore, proper selection of the filler metal is important for successful welding. Some of the points are to be considered when well uh, selecting the filler wire for uh, tungsten uh, inert gas welding process for uh, joining of uh, uh, a given material and these points are mechanical property requirement. We have to see that uh, what uh, weld joint will be produced after the welding and what will be its mechanical uh, strength or the mechanical characteristics. The joint produced uh, must provide the strength or the other mechanical properties uh, required to perform the desired function by the weld joint. So, the filler metal must be able to provide the weld metal which can take the desired load or which can perform the intended function. The metallurgical compatibility is also important because sometimes dilution changes the composition of the weld metal and that uh, leads to the some of the problems like solidification cracking or mismatch uh, in, in, in the, in the, in the uh, thermal expansion coefficient between the different metals uh, or the between the base metal and the weld metal can also lead to the problems in, in uh, after producing the joint. The cracking tendency of the base metal also should be seen under the welding conditions. Many times HAZ uh, shows the sensitivity for cracking and that should be taken into account while selecting the filler metal. Like aluminum copper and aluminum zinc magnesium alloys shows the tendency for partial melting zone uh, or uh, the liquidation cracking in the heat affected zone. So, those aspects should be kept in mind while selecting the filler metal and the filler metal should be selected in such a way that it offers the desired, uh, the joint is able to offer the desired mechanical properties and it is compatible with the waste metal and it does not create the pro creates the problem related to the cutting of the base metal under the welding conditions. In, so, alternatively for third point we can say it should not develop the much residual stresses which can lead to uh, the otherwise cracking of the um, heat affected zone or the uh, weld joint itself. So, as I have said uh, that uh, improper selection of the filler metal can lead to the cracking or uh, uh, poor uh, corrosion resistance of the weld joint. Here typical uh, figure will show the solidification cracking of uh, the weld joint here at the center of the weldment we can see the long crack is running along the weld center line indicating the occurring of the solidification cracking due to the development of the residual stresses and poor strength of uh, the weld joint uh, weld uh, filler metal particularly at high temperature. Uh, the specific material wise uh, 
the filler metal we can see here aluminum silicon fillers are used as a general purpose filler metals for welding of the aluminum alloys and uh, the aluminum magnesium silicon alloys can be easily welded if uh, uh, if we use uh, aluminum 5 to 12 percent silicon filler wires uh, aluminum uh, uh, silicon filler wires offers the low melting point and very good fluidity and uh, quite good uh, strength and uh, that in turn uh, helps to uh, produce uh, the weld joint easily and uh, while in case of the steels uh, the filler metal is to be selected very carefully like in welding of uh, the dissimilar steels stainless steel and carbon or alloy steels welds uh, if the welds are to be used for the high temperature purpose for high temperature applications then it requires some sort of buttering layer at the fin surfaces before using uh, uh, the final uh, 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 filler metal uh, for to fill up the gap uh, between the plates to be welded because this is a uh, this helps to this buttering layer of the nickel helps to check the diffusion of the carbon from the base metal uh, of one type to the another type like the diffusion of the carbon can take place from the carbon or alloy steel towards the stainless steel through the weld metal after a long exposure uh, uh, at high temperature. So, to check that diffusion it is required to butter the fin surfaces first by using the nickel um, uh, alloy and then go for uh, filling the uh, gap between the plates to be welded using the suitable filler metal. Now, we will see the tick torch uh, which is used uh, for uh, uh, producing the desired heat and uh, melting the fin surfaces is also another important component uh, in the TIG uh, welding system and the TIG uh, torch uh, includes uh, the number of uh, uh, components like uh, the nozzle, electrode and collets and a combination of these three components form the tick torch which is uh, uh, rated in terms of the current carrying capacity because the torches uh, are um, uh, if the welding torch is able to handle higher level of current it will uh, produce a deeper penetration it will be able to produce, produce deeper penetration and higher welding speeds and uh, if uh, the welding current uh, uh, ability of the torch to handle uh, the uh, high current is not there then uh, it will not be possible to get the high welding speed and the high production rate and the desired penetration and that is why TIG torch is rated in terms of its current carrying capacity higher uh, the current uh, uh, carrying capacity of the TIG torch greater will be the current it will be able, it will be able to handle for welding of the thick uh, seas. So, uh, and that is why uh, the TIG uh, torches are rated in terms of the current carrying capacity. The welding torch can be uh, of uh, the air cool type for the lower current range and the water cool type uh, for the high current ranges. Say uh, uh, 0 to 150 ampere up to 0 to 150 ampere welding torches are normally air cooled because whatever heat is generated due to the flow of current up to this range uh, that is dissipated under the normal cooling provided by the ambient air. But if the welding torch uh, is to be used uh, to handle for uh, uh, the higher current like uh, the 150 to 1000 ampere in, in range of 150 to, to 1000 amperes then water cooling system is used to maintain the temperature of the torch within the safe limits. So, uh, the air cool torches can be air cooled or water cooled type depending upon the current carrying capacity of the welding torch. Welding torch mainly consists electrode, collet and uh, the nozzle. Each element or each component of the torch has to perform a specific function. Uh, before going into the functions, we can see the details of the TIG torch. Here uh, 
um, this is the filler wire being supplied in the arc region. This portion indicates the electrode and uh, electrode of the tungsten and here this is the collet portion uh, which is used to hold the electrode and this is the nozzle. nozzle uh, so, here we can see first of all we have electrode around the electrode there is a collet and around the collet there is a nozzle. Nozzles, nozzle helps to form a jet of the shielding gas around the arc to provide the desired uh, protection from the atmospheric contamination. Uh, the functions of uh, the parts of the TIG torch uh, can be seen here in, uh, in slightly detail. The collets are mainly used to accommodate the electrodes of the varying diameter. We may have to use uh, the electro uh, collets of the different uh, types or the sizes so that uh, the, uh, the electrodes can be held firmly with the firm electrical contact so that the desired power can be supplied to the electrode. Uh, for uh, striking the arc. Nozzle helps to form a jet of the shielding gas around the electrode and the weld pool uh, and the weld pool for its protection from the atmospheric contamination. So, the size of the nozzle and uh, uh, its material is very important for proper functioning and production of the sound weld joint. The electrode here third component electrode supplies the desired current required for developing the arc and melting of the fang surfaces of the base metal to be welded because an arc is struck between the tungsten electrode and the base metal. So, the electrode must get the power and it should supply the required power for developing the arc. Here uh, we can see the things in detail about the nozzle. The nozzle helps to form a jet of uh, the shielding gas and uh, normally uh, electrode is projected beyond the nozzle so that arc can be struck between the electrode and uh, the work piece. And this uh, projection of the electrode from uh, the nozzle can be in range of 1.5 to 5 mm. Uh, normally uh, for uh, joining the corners uh, 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 and the fillet welds um, is smaller. Mm, nozzle uh, uh, and uh, uh, smaller projections of the electrode from the nozzle are used while conventional it is uh, 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 kept in range of 4 to 5 mm. Since nozzle is uh, very close to the arc, so it uh, always get heated uh, from the heat of the arc uh, and uh, uh, that is why chances are there to get damaged. and. Uh, to increase that resistance to the heat uh, from the arc, these uh, nozzles are made of the ceramic materials. But the ceramic materials are known to have uh, the poor mechanical properties. That is why these uh, need to be handled carefully. And uh, the, during the welding, the nozzle to the workpiece distance is kept in uh, about 25 mm. Uh, if the distance is, is small it, uh, between the workpiece and the nozzle, it can uh, uh, cause the back burn to uh, the nozzle and uh, that is why an optimum distance has to be maintained between the nozzle and the workpiece. Ceramic materials uh, of which nozzles, uh, nozzle is made have the poor mechanical properties particularly the toughness and uh, that is why there is a need to avoid any kind of shock to the nozzle because due to the poor toughness it can uh, fracture just like uh, uh, um, uh, very brittle material and therefore during the welding it should be handled carefully uh, to avoid any kind of damage to the nozzle. Uh, gradually in practice the nozzle is damaged gradually by chipping of a small pieces and also these are damaged gradually from the heat of the arc and the gradual damage leads to the reduction in size and, sh and change in shape of the nozzle which adversely affects its ability to form a firm jet 
around the whirlpool and around the arc and that is why it is uh, uh, frequently required also to change the nozzle at regular intervals. The inner diameter of the nozzle uh, is selected in such a way that it matches with the size of the weld pool which is expected. If this point is not kept in mind then weld pool uh, may be left uncovered by the sealing gases and that may lead to the atmospheric contamination. That is why inner diameter of the selected in such a way that it at least matches with the size of the weld pool or bigger than the size of the weld pool and the nozzle of the TIG torch should be uh, replaced regularly because gradual uh, damage to the nozzle uh, leads to the change in size and shape of the nozzle which uh, causes uh, uh, the reduction in ability to form a form jet of the sealing gases around the arc and uh, around the weld pool and that is why it should be replaced regularly uh, for uh, proper uh, sealing of the weld pool uh, because here we can see the same thing as damaged nozzle does not form desired jet of the sealing gas around the weld pool to protect it from the atmospheric contamination. Uh, we can see the things now uh, in, in the welding torch nozzle uh, plays a significant role in, in forming a perfect sealing around the weld pool and uh, another component electrode. Uh, uh, of the welding torch supplies the desired current to extract uh, an arc between uh, the electrode and work piece. The electrode plays a major role in successful uh, welding uh, by the TIG process and uh, uh, these uh, th there are certain important aspects related to the uh, electrode which affects the performance of uh, mm, the tungsten inert gas welding and these are that what is the material of the electrode. Electrode can be uh, the pure tungsten or it can be coated with the thorium or zirconium. The performance of all these three types of uh, the electrodes um, is uh, different. So, as per needs as per the application either pure or thoriated tungsten electrode or zirconium coated tungsten electrode is used. The size of the electrode also plays a significant role in deciding the kind of uh, the bead geometry which will be formed and uh, the depth of penetration which will be obtained and uh, the electrode size is mainly specified in terms of its diameter although length is also there, but these are considered as a non consumable electrodes. Gradually there will be a reduction in the length of the electrode and when and these are uh, uh, gradually worn out one by one after a long period of time we require to replace even these tungsten electrodes, but normally the size of the elect tungsten electrodes is specified by its diameter. Shape of the electrode, what kind of the uh, electrode tip has been shaped, is it a ball shaped or a square ended or the tapered one that affects the uh, the weld bead cross section and the depth of penetration which is uh, produced uh, by the arc uh, in the weldment. So, the cross section of the weldment and uh, its uh, penetration is governed by the shape of the electrode uh, tip and the type of the current which is to be used. The different electrodes will be able to give the different different performance in terms of uh, uh, the arc stability and in terms of the life of the electrode and the cleaning action. So, as per the type of the electrode material the suitable current uh, uh, AC or DC type of uh, DC type is selected and uh, the selection of the type of welding current also will be governed by uh, the type of material which is to be welded. At uh, the same way if the DC is to be used which polarity is to be used that will also affect the performance of the electrode because all these elect life of all these electrodes uh, is different when DC E n is used compared to the when DC E p is used because there is a significant difference in the amount of heat which is generated 
in the electrode side with the change of polarity and that is why to have uh, the proper utilization of the electrode to produce the desired weld joint it is necessary to look into uh, in, in greater detail about all these factors related to the electrode. Pure tungsten electrode is invariably used in, in the uh, tungsten inert gas welding process and the main reason for its use as an electrode are like this ability uh, to withstand up to the high temperature. It, its melting point is quite high and that is around 3410, 3410 degree centigrade and because of this ability it, uh, it can withstand easily under the arc conditions or the arc which is uh, produced and the good electrical conductivity um, for uh, striking the arc it is necessary that uh, the electrode material has the ability to uh, uh, supply the desired current with, with the less electrical resistance heating effect and because of good electrical conductivity electrical resistance heating is very less and that is why it is not heated much because of the electrical resistance heating when uh, even when uh, the high current is passed although tungsten electrode will have also uh, the uh, its current carrying capacity which uh, can be increased by coating some other materials. Thermal conductivity also important because heat generated uh, at the electrode tip has to be transferred effectively to maintain its temperature and reduce its degrade degradation. So, the, the good thermal conductivity, good electrical conductivity and high melting point are the important points because of which it is selected and one more important point of the tungsten uh, um, material as a, a selection of the tungsten material as an electrode is that it is good electron emission ability and good electron emissivity means um, uh, for striking the arc and for arc maintenance it is necessary to have the electrons in, in the arc zone and if uh, the electrode is able to produce the large number of electrons easily the arc uh, uh, the striking of the arc and its maintenance becomes easy um, and that is why if the tungsten is used as an electrode it offers the advantage of the good electron emissivity and that helps to strike and maintain the arc easily in addition to the other factors. Uh, sometimes uh, um, the special coatings on the tungsten electrodes are used to increase its performance uh, like uh, the current carrying capacity of uh, the pure tungsten is limited and uh, uh, because of that it offers also poor life and an ability to handle the heavy currents and that is why special coating materials are used um, to increase its current carrying capacity like electrodes for DC welding can be normally uh, can be of the pure tungsten or tungsten with the 1 or 2 percent of thorium, zirconium, lanthanum and cesium. Here addition of uh, these uh, metal oxides uh, help to increase the current carrying capacity of uh, the tungsten electrode and uh, uh, because the pure tungsten electrodes uh, offer the poor life compared to the coated electrodes, the electrodes which are coated with thorium, zirconium, lanthanum and cesium and these materials, uh, coating of these materials help to improve the uh, further electron emissivity of uh, uh, the electrode, tungsten electrode when these are coated with these materials and uh, which helps to facilitate uh, the easy arc ignition and also increases the current carrying capacity. So, the coating of the pure tungsten electrode with the thorium and the zirconium particularly is very helpful in improving the electron emissivity and increasing the current carrying capacity. That is why for uh, the AC welding uh, and uh, at higher current uh, and normally uh, the thorium and zirconium coated electrodes are used because pure uh, tungsten electrodes offer somewhat poor life compared to the coated 
electrode and the reason behind the better performance of uh, the coated electrodes is uh, that uh, the work function which indicates the electron emission capability of the different material is uh, uh, different and uh, the, the work function of uh, the tungsten material and uh, the other coating materials is also different. Uh, work function indicates the amount of energy it will take to energy it will take to release the electrons greater is the energy requirement for releasing the electrons greater uh, poorer the electron emissivity. Here for tungsten uh, work function is 4.4, for zirconium it is 4.2, for thorium it is 3.4, lanthanum 3.3 and cesium 2.6. So, here application of these two uh, materials oxides as a coating material significantly helps to increase the electron emissivity of the coated tungsten uh, electrodes uh, and uh, increase uh, their current carrying capacity. And the reason is uh, the work function of these coating materials is poor, these needs less energy to release the electrons and that is why their electron emissivity is better compared to the pure tungsten. So, when these uh, low energy potential elements means um, the, uh, the elements of uh, the lower work function um, when uh, coated over the tungsten, these coatings help to uh, increase the electron uh, emissivity of the coated electrodes and uh, also increase their current carrying capacity. Uh, you can see here uh, thorium coated tungsten electrodes offers the many advantages over the pure uh, tungsten electrode like high current carrying capacity, better electron emissibility, longer life, uh, longer life of uh, the thorium coated electrode, good resistance to the contamination and easy arc ignition. Um, thorium coated electrodes also offer the advantage of um, the better arc stability because uh, these electrodes are able to release the electrons easily and when the large number of the electrons are available in the arc region, the arc can be maintained easily and which in turn helps to increase the arc stability. Here as per the American Welding Society, um, the, the different composition uh, of the uh, tungsten electrodes have been given and uh, the EWP indicates the pure tungsten electrode and it is uh, the percentage, minimum percentage of tungsten in this electrode is 99.5 percent nil thorium, nil zirconium and uh, here uh, the total other elements can be maximum of 2.5 percent and uh, thorium 1 coated tungsten electrode can have 98.5 and 0.8 uh, point, uh, point 98.5 and uh, the thorium uh, can be there in range of 0.8 to 1.2 percent and uh, the maximum other elements can be 2.5 mm. Thorium 2 tungsten coated electrode uh, EWTH2 can have maximum uh, a minimum percentage of the tungsten 97.5 and the thorium uh, percentage is in range of 1.7 to 2.2 and the maximum percentage of other elements is 0.5 and uh, the zirconium coated tungsten electrodes can have a max minimum percentage of the tungsten 99.2 and the zirconium 0.15 to 0.4 and uh, the maximum percentage of other elements is 0.5. The poor life of uh, the tungsten, uh, pure tungsten electrode is, um, is attributed to the excessive heating caused by the, its poor current, ca current carrying capacity and the lower melting point. Uh, lower melting point of the tungsten carbide which is formed uh, due to the contamination during the welding. So, here uh, as I have said that pure tungsten electrodes uh, have the poor, and poor current carrying capacity. So, the flow of the current through the tungsten causes the electrical resistance heating which in turn degrades the life of the electrode. At the same time whenever the contact between the electrode and the work piece takes place, 
the, if it picks up the impurities at the tip of the electrode, uh, the impurities in form of the carbon forms the tungsten carbide which has the lower melting point than the pure tungsten and that also leads to the degradation of uh, the tungsten electrode. And uh, this tungsten uh, carbide if transferred to the weld pool then it will be present as a tungsten carbide inclusion which can adversely affect the performance uh, of uh, mechanical performance of the weld joint because the inclusions of the tungsten carbide particles acts as a site of uh, nucleation site of uh, the cracks or acts as a weak areas. That is why pure tungsten electrodes are normally not used for the critical applications because there will be tendency for transfer of the tungsten carbide particles as an inclusion in the weldment which will degrade the mechanical properties of the weld joint and uh, decrease the reliability and the safety uh, uh, of uh, the joint particularly in the critical applications. The TIG electrodes uh, can be uh, uh, can work with the AC uh, or with the DC, but uh, uh, the AC electrodes uh, uh, the uh, elect tungsten electrodes for AC welding uh, should have the good electron emissivity. If the electron emissivity of the tungsten electrode is poor, the arc is stability and its maintenance will be a major problem. That is why for AC welding where tungsten electrode must operate at a high temperature either zirconia coated tungsten electrode or pure tungsten electrode is preferred uh, because the rate of tungsten loss of these electrodes is less compared to the thoria coated electrode. Thorium coated electrode are subjected to the rapid degradation under the AC welding conditions compared to that of uh, the pure tungsten and the zirconium coated tungsten electrodes. Zirconium coated uh, electrodes uh, helps to maintain its shape of uh, the ball type which is desired for producing the desired weld bead cross section during the welding. And the size of the electrode uh, uh, which are commonly used in industrial applications is found in range of uh, 0.5 to 6.4 mm in diameter and the length of electrode can vary from 150 to the 200 m, mm and the current carrying capacity of uh, the electrode uh, uh, depends on the polarity being used with the DC welding. Current carrying capacity of uh, an electrode with the DC EP is found lower than with the DC EN. Here this is a important point uh, because in, in case of DC EP more heat is generated in the electrode side and which causes the rapid degradation of uh, the electrode compared to the case when DC EN is used because when DC EN use, is used only one third of the heat of the arc is generated in the electrode side and that is why life of the electrode is not very adversely affected. AC is used only when the welding of the aluminum and ma or magnesium and their alloy is to be carried out because AC welding offers the advantage of the cleaning action during the welding of the aluminum and magnesium alloys. So now I will summarize this lecture. In this lecture we have seen the need of uh, the development of the tungsten inert gas welding process and the different components related to the tungsten inert gas welding process like uh, the power source, the filler metal which is used in, in, the, in this process and uh, uh, the tungsten uh, electro, uh, welding, TIG uh, welding torch. Uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, some of the details related to the electrode uh, which are electrodes which are used in TIG welding process. Uh, some other aspects related to uh, the tungsten electrodes and uh, the shielding gas which is used in this process and uh, uh, some uh, important variants of the tungsten electro electrode gas welding process and the application of this process we will see in the next lecture. This lecture will continue in the second part 
of uh, in this lecture based on the tungsten inert gas welding process. Thank you.